All right, so 24 days ago, Henry took us into this greenhouse and he showed us a new technique of propagating his sweet potato plants. So he did over here on these tables, which they're not here now, but they were. Usually he buys his sweet potato slips, but now he's gonna start making them. You can get four times the amount of uh, sweet potato slips from just like one individual slip. So I never talked about this before, but this has two, this greenhouse has two layers of plastic for double insulation. So there's one plastic here and then right on top of it, there's another piece of plastic. And then there's this giant fan right here that makes a lot of noise. It actually blows air into the two pieces of plastics and it acts as a double pane window. It's great for extra insulation, great for starting your seeds. Um, in this sweet potato video you're about to watch, it has this loud buzzing sound. That is the sound of the fan. Get your pencils ready because this information is awesome. Things that I never knew about sweet potatoes, just, let's just check it out. This, uh, yeah, this is a great, uh, this is where I learned everything about farming, growing for market. Hmm. There's another picture in here of what it looks like when they plant it. Yeah, that's what it looks like. 16 days after planting, and they say to plant them out in uh, 18 days. Hmm. So basically it's just like a normal transplanting that's cool, huh? of, of plugs. Are they, are they transplanting this in May, May 27th? Yep. Mm -hmm. These guys are even farther uh, south than I am. So. Last year I didn't get mine planted until June 2nd. And actually they did really good. I always used to try to get them out by the 15th to the 20th. But maybe I was pushing it too early. I think this year we'll start, as soon as these are ready, we'll start transplanting them. And then maybe we'll have just like waves of them. You know, we can do a good comparison of them. Which ones do the best? It's called a single load propagation of sweet potatoes. So, take a sweet potato vine here. And I'm cutting it um, all the way down to where I see the first, uh, first nice looking leaf there. And I cut it about a fourth of an inch above there. And then I take this, and if you look at this, between this is called the leaf axle and there you see there's a bud growing out there the leaf axle is wherever there's a, a leaf comes off of the stem so there's a leaf coming off so that's called the leaf axle mm -hmm. and in the leaf axle there's a bud and that'll become a vine just like a tomato and a tomato plant that would be the sucker okay mm -hmm. um, so that's that's gonna be a new bud and then below that there's a little swelling right there actually there's a really good one you see that one you can see it's already turning white that's gonna form a root right there and you can see another one right there each one, so each one of these has, potentially has roots and a new stem. So we take that over here. And supposedly this method is more productive than the old fashioned method where the old fashioned method you would just grow slips like this and then you would just break that whole slip all the way off the plant and you would stick this whole thing in the ground. Mm -hmm. But supposedly these are even more productive. So. Then we just stick this in the ground and we cut it and again about a fourth inch above there. So all we got is that new bud and then right at the soil or right under the soil I got the the root buds. Oops, actually I messed up that in there. And so I just go down the line, just go up the plant. And each one of these is gonna be a sweet potato plant. That's what they say. I think the Japanese made it up because the, the article when I looked on the web, the first guy who talked about, or the guy that everybody cited was a Japanese scientist. So I don't know if it's a traditional Japanese method or if it's a new method. And then nobody tells you what to do with these very tops. I have a, I got an axle there, an axle there, an axle there. I basically got one, two, at least four right here, but I can't cut between them. So what I'm doing, I'm doing two experiments. On one side, this side over here, I'm taking next time I'm burying one whole uh, node and going up to the second node. And on the other side, I'm not burying, I'm just doing the single node. 
Um, I read an article by another guy, a farmer, who said that um, you get more more total production. He actually does five nodes, so he would use five whole nodes. And put, he says he puts them in a quart pot, and that gives him the most production. He said with a single node and a double, even a double node like this, he says you get um, really big roots. But everybody, else, nobody else mentioned that at all. So I thought I'd try it the way that the scientists talk about first. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, I'll try the way the farmer did next year. So we can get probably four, four plants out of that. Wow. <laughs> and normally, when you just plant a slip, where do you cut it? We don't even you don't even cut them. You actually break them off of the root oh, on the ground. Just... Yeah, and they'll have a little bit underground here. They'll have a little bit of roots on them. And then um, we'll probably have we'll buy probably. I bought some organic slips that I won't cancel my order, so you'll probably see how to plant slips. But with slips, we lay them in at an angle and lay all this stuff underground and just tip up oh, this yeah, much. Yeah. Okay. Did you do that already? Yeah. And then, so again, you're going to get roots, roots off of each one of these. The other thing they said about this is it concentrates your root set, so it might make the digging a lot easier. Mm. You won't have to dig out. Usually, we dig out like six feet, I mean, and that's a lot of digging. If it's so they say more concentrated root set and uh, and more total production. So that's true. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing plant. And I was reading a little bit. Of, well, as I was reading this, I was reading these scientific articles. Um, I didn't realize that. So this is a tropical Central American plant. It's a New World plant in the Morning Glory family. Um, as you can tell by the leaves and the flowers, looks like a morning glory as well. But uh, so it's um, the wild sweet potato. It's the reason it makes those big tubers. I always assume that was to um, survive through the winter and then come up in the in the spring. It's actually in the climate that it's in. It grows in. Uh, um, it comes from a climate that has a dry and a wet season. Mm -hmm. So it grows during the wet season and actually goes dormant during the dry season. So um, that's why um, it stores well. Most roots don't store well, store well at a high temperature, a relatively high temperature, but sweet potatoes have to be above like 55 mm -hmm. or they go bad. Then you can even store them like at 60 or, you know, basically just on your counter because they're meant to, to just sit in the soil until the rain's starting again. So if they're sitting in those tropics, they're sitting in hot soil yeah. until they get wet again, then they start sprouting. Okay. I, never, I never knew that. I always thought it, it was just the opposite. A really good sweet potato growth, although it's not, when we were kids, we always tried to grow sweet potatoes and always got these tiny little things. The season was a lot shorter. Now I usually get a really good crop, but it's still, they start really forming their roots. Um, when they start forming the roots, is day length dependent. They're waiting for the days to be a certain length, which is pretty late. It's usually like in the middle of August, it seems like to me. And then, and then every day after that, so like they'll form up slowly, and then as you get into the, the shorter and shorter days, they'll start getting bigger and bigger. So if you have to dig them, say if we get an early frost like September 15th, they maybe only put on half of their size. And if you can sit them in the ground for another month, they'll be at least double, double the size. Uh. Okay. So we're always, it's always kind of a kitchen go like if we're going to have an early frost or not. And because the root set is depending on the day length, it doesn't do any good to put them out early. Okay. So if you put them out on, say if you put them out on, like right now, and put down black plastic and cover them with real cover to try to heat them up so they'd be happy outside, it still wouldn't help because they're not going to start producing those roots until the same day anyway. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just wait till the ground is. So you can't really hurry them along. You just, you just have to hope for a long fall, a long warm fall.